Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, I will be giving a talk about building an evil charging station. Um, really short about myself. I'm Stefan Dopp. I work at uh, the internal red team of KPN, a Dutch telecom operator. Uh, we do red teaming and also pen testing on internal components. Um, I want to thank two people. First of all, William Horner, who is a colleague of mine, uh, who I was talking to uh, at some evening a couple of months back. Um, and we had this discussion about um, how your keyboard on your mobile device sort of like pops up when you're typing letters and how that's also shown on the password field. Um, we were thinking about the idea that you could extract this kind of information. Um, my colleague wrote a quick POC and that basically gave us the idea to do a little bit of research on this. Um, one thing I want to mention here, um, I think uh, we as uh, security professionals, hackers, infosec people, uh, we should do a lot more to work together with uh, master students on research projects. Um, on our side, one of the things we do is um, we do short research projects with uh, SNE. That's the security master of the UFA in Amsterdam, um, where we work together with the student uh, to do some research. Uh, our focus is uh, very much on building a POC. Of course, on the student side, uh, he has to write a research paper that will be accepted by his teachers. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Um, some examples of previous research that we did is uh, TR 369 which is actually uh, quite interesting because it's based on uh, MQTT. Um, and the, the security of that, it's basically uh, CPE management, modem management. Uh, another research topic we did is um, looking into the concept of using an attack and defense CTFs uh, for purple teaming. Um, I want to also give a quick shout out to Thomas. Um, he was going to join me to present this talk. Um, but he just started uh, a new position at the ING uh, Red Team in the Netherlands. And due to various introduction and onboarding activities, uh, he said he really couldn't make it. Uh, but I want to make it clear that uh, quite some of the work done here was done by him. Um, well, I'll skip the agenda for now. Uh, you've probably all seen this picture. Um, a cell phone charging, charging station uh, supplied by the NSA. And I'm sure you've also all been at airports where there are these public charging stations where people basically come with their um, phone, they put it in the charger, and then they start using their phone because they want to check their messages and do all the things you normally do on a mobile device. Um, to give a little bit of background on USB-C, um, it isn't just a thing that you use to charge your phone. Uh, USB supports something called alternate modes, uh, which allows you to, to mirror your screen over display ports or HDMI. Um, there's also some other options like USB Ethernet and USB HID devices like a mouse or a keyboard. Um, most of the brands accept uh, or adopt these standards, uh, though there are some that basically uh, disable them. Um, well, most of the people who know iPhones know that it uses lightning. Um, so you can end up buying a whole bunch of dongles on Apple just to get your phone to do things that it uh, should be able to do. Um, there's obviously some previous research on this topic. Uh, I imagine many of you have at some point wrote like a rubber ducky script to brute force the pin code on your mobile device or stuff like that. Um, it's still surprisingly effective. Both iPhone and Android uh, support keyboards, uh, support running commands like opening a web URL or going to settings uh, and clicking on things. Um, another issue is uh, phones also support USB Ethernet, which creates a sort of rather effective, simple, man-in-the-middle network thing. Uh, that said, 
it's no longer 2011 where we were playing with SSL strip. Uh, these days, the connections that your phone makes tend to be pretty damn secure. Uh, one other thing to mention, on Android phones, uh, there's something called ADB. Um, this is also something that you could enable with a rubber ducky script. Um, and ADB allows you to install apps. You can tell ADB also to use a minus G flag to basically um, preemptively give the application all the permissions that it requires. So uh, it won't ask for the permissions anymore. And it's very easy to use something like MSF Venom to make an evil app that basically provides like a connect back shell to your device. Um, so the, the basic proof of concept that we wanted to build is relatively straightforward. Um, basically, somebody takes a phone, wants to charge that phone, puts it in a charging port, uh, but on the back side of the charging port, uh, it's not just providing power, it's also uh, mirroring the HDMI on the phone. Um, you can use something like a, a mirror box, which is basically just a small device with an HDMI in and an HDMI out, uh, to man in the middle the HDMI connection and output it over USB to your device. Um, from the simple picture that we've drawn to uh, actually doing this, uh, as you can see here, this is basically just a Fairphone uh, hooked up to a Dell uh, USB HDMI adapter, hooked up to a mirror box, and then hooked up to a dongle because I'm using a MacBook. Um, as you can see, this works quite well. Uh, on the bottom left is uh, the phone I'm using. It's screen casting to the, the bigger screen uh, in the middle. And on the right, you see my laptop receiving uh, the same signal. Um, I'm very happy that the EU managed to get Apple to uh, move to USB-C. Uh, that makes a lot of things easier. Uh, this is the recent iPhone that I bought, and on the right you can see that basically uh, keyboard, HDMI, and Ethernet all work out of the box when you uh, install a dongle in, that in your phone. Uh, on older iPhones uh, it also works, but you really have to use the, the Apple proprietary adapters. Uh, USB Ethernet on your older iPhone is not easy to get working, but it does work if you use uh, an Apple Ethernet adapter. Um, on the side of Google, uh, for a long time, uh, the Pixel devices have not really supported uh, screen mirroring. Um, but there were already some code changes uh, made to Android 14 that were quite likely, uh, or at least hinting that this would start working soon. And a couple of days back, uh, somebody actually managed to get uh, HDMI mirroring working on your Pixel as well. Uh, it's a feature that a lot of users request. Um, obviously, when you're uh, casting uh, your phone to a TV, um, things like notifications, messages, uh, SMS two-factor, uh, stuff like that will also be displayed on the monitor. Um, so what's the goal here? The goal here is, uh, as an attacker, you would like to extract sensitive information from devices. And as an additional requirement, we wanted to do this in a way that you could scale it up. Um, I don't think I, I need to tell you what kind of stuff is uh, inside your phone apps, but obviously uh, pin codes, passwords, financial data, all that kind of stuff. Um, so as I said, most phones support this screen mirroring um, while charging your phone. Um, but there are some questions, like uh, if you mirror this, does it show uh, you typing your password? Does it show your PIN code? Uh, do you get a warning or a notification? And um, since we work for a telecom operator, we basically went to one of those stores where they have all the different uh, models of phones. And we went over a lot of devices to look whether they want to mirror the, the video, how they deal with uh, 
uh, the password field or the, the keyboard where you're typing your passwords and whether they uh, warn a user about this. Um, these are a few screenshots from uh, various phones. On the left you can see um, Samsung DeX, which is the Samsung app for like a, a virtual desktop, which pops up quite bigly in your face. Um, after it's enabled, there's like a small icon. Um, one thing I want to mention, we talked about HDI emulation before, uh, which is basically the, the ability to plug a mouse into a phone. Uh, you could also use that to click away these kind of warnings, messages, and such. Uh, on the side of Apple, the notifications are rather smaller. Uh, the middle picture is an older iPhone. The right picture is an iPhone 15. Um, I think that for the, the average user, uh, that small icon on the top does not really scream at you like, hey, everything that you're doing on your phone is now being displayed on an external monitor as well, or being recorded. So, um, to prove the, the point here a little bit, and also to give the student something to work on uh, in terms of automating this process, uh, there's one thing we wanted to look at, and that's um, the idea of extracting a password as the user is typing it on a website or inside a, a mobile app. Um, one approach that we looked into is uh, something we would call motion-based detection, where you take uh, the frames from a video and look for the, the difference between the, the previous frame and the current frame. Um, as you can see, when you're typing a password, on uh, a phone, they helpfully show the last uh, letter you typed, so you can sort of quickly notice if you made like a typo. Um, and obviously you can use that to letter for letter uh, extract the password from the video while the user is typing it. Um, another thing we looked at is if there's a lot of stuff going on on the phone, it's pretty hard to effectively OCR everything that's going on. So you could establish regions of interest based on specific keywords that you're uh, looking for. In this case, passwords. Um, so we build a POC. It consists of a couple of components. Uh, code to take a video stream, split it into frames, uh, to detect the, the differences there. Uh, something we call password detect, which is extracting the passwords uh, and to show that this is like just one of many things you could do to take information out of a phone. Um, we worked a little bit on something um, that detects explicit pictures. So if you're sharing your nudes with your partner, um, Stuff like that could also be easily automatically extracted while you're charging your phone at uh, an airport. Um, something else that's good to mention as well, um, you could also think about something like uh, a hotel, where you have in your room a USB char charging port for your phone, um, and you could perform a very similar attack there. Uh, the same goes for like an executive lounge at an airport where you know that there are generally some more high profile people. Um, but all of this kind of revolves around the idea that people are coming to you, they plug in their device in, in your setup. Um, so sort of like a watering hole attack, but then uh, physically. Um, to show this a little bit how this worked, uh, we implemented an interactive mode in the, the password detect, which basically shows um, the current frame and the next frame on the left, and the letter we're extracting from that password. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, in the end, you extract the password. 
Um, we based all this on uh, something called Tesseract, which is an open source OCR program. Um, it's not as strong as the, the OCR on your mobile device. Um, so it will sometimes make small mistakes. Um, we looked at like doing multiple passes on the, the video stream, some other ways to get this working better. Um, but this is to some extent still uh, also a work in progress to fully automate this kind of extraction. Uh, performance wise, this is pretty heavy for like uh, your average consumer laptop to do. Um, if you want to do this in real time on multiple devices, well, you're going to have to uh, fork over some money to, to Amazon or equivalent. Um, the thing is here is this is really a rather simple concept, but I do feel that vendors kind of should be uh, warning their users a lot more when they plug in a phone into a USB port, at least when the screen is being mirrored when you do that. Um, I should also mention that if you look at iOS, uh, that's actually the only phone where we noticed that uh, when you're unlocking your phone while it's being screen mirrored, it actually hides the, the buttons that you're pressing. Uh, but this is specific to, to Apple itself. Um, as you can see on the middle and on the right, uh, my Google Authenticator is happy to uh, mirror its output. Um, the banking app that I'm using on the right uh, from ING in the Netherlands is also happy to show the, the pin code you're typing. Um, and obviously, you could do a lot of stuff with like banking apps or other financial applications as well. Um, to continue a little bit on this, uh, a few other things that we were thinking about is um, building like, you know, like most companies, they have uh, screens on all the desks, they have docking stations. Uh, you could very easily use the same proof of concept setup to uh, build a device that basically records the, the screen. For example, if you're doing like a red team exercise on your finance department, uh, you could combine a keylogger with a device like this to basically see not only what the user is typing, but also what they're doing on their system and extract it in some fashion, maybe with a, an eSIM. Um, and another option would be to basically build a power bank that does something similar and send it to a target as a gift. Um, the code is online. Um, so if anybody wants to play with it, uh, go for it. I have a whole box of dongles and other devices uh, in my hotel room. So if anybody really wants to check if their phone is, is doing this kind of stuff, uh, come say hi. And if anybody wants to extend the work that we're doing, that would be really awesome. Um, especially the idea that you could also click away notifications and such um, would make this a, a pretty strong uh, attack against devices. Um, the conclusion here, a um, couple of months back, uh, the FBI was warning people about uh, juice checking and charging stations. I have no idea whether this was relevant or related to that. I don't think so. I think it was more like a miscommunication thing between various departments, uh, which ended up warning users about something that is an issue, but is maybe not the, the, the most urgent thing to warn people about. Um, as I said, we are a little bit surprised that phones are so easy in terms of not giving you any indication that you're sharing your screen. Um, but given the fact that you can see that Apple has taken certain measures, I don't think this is like an unknown thing for phone providers. It's of course always the battle between convenience and security, and apparently they made the choice uh, to focus more on convenience. Um, last uh, small note, um, while standing here at Hacklu, I'll take this moment to also do a little bit of promotion. Um, next year we're organizing a new HackerCon in the Netherlands. It will be called OrangeCon, uh, more information will be provided soon. 
we're hoping to create a, a nice small conference focused on sharing information and keeping it uh, approachable also for students and other people. Um, thank you very much for uh, listening to my talk. I don't know if we have much time. Okay, uh, are there any questions? Great talk, Steph. Excellent work. Um, technical question. When you do the screen mirroring and a keyboard pops up in the lower half of the phone, and if you're typing on the keyboard, does the keystrokes like also get mirrored? Like when you touch the key, you know how the key bounces up. Does that also get mirrored? And um, if so, can you do the OCR just by recognizing the positions? That, yeah, that change. Two, two good questions. Yeah. Uh, first of all, yes, on like a, a Fairphone or an Android that gets shared. On iOS, no. Apple basically hides the keyboard, hides the keyboard. which okay. is a smart move. Um, the second part is, can you extract this information as well? Um, yes, you can. Um, we initially looked at like uh, watching pixels on uh, certain locations to see like people typing pin codes or typing passwords. But the, the keyboards on various phones differ a little bit. Uh, so that's why we sort of made the move to go to uh, character recognition. And then, yeah, it doesn't really matter much if you use the password field or the, the pop-up thing on the, the keyboard. Thank you. Uh, one question. Which Android version you were using? Which? Android version. Um, we have, well, I mean, you know, just an estimate of uh, the versions of Android that uh, were used. Well, the, most of the testing devices I had my hands on were like Fairphones. Um, I don't think they're running the, like the latest version of Android. Um, we did not look a lot into uh, Pixels because back then the idea was that Google basically made the decision to disable this. Um, so there might be some changes in like the latest version of Android, mm -hmm. um, but I'm honestly not sure. Yeah. Uh, this is my first question. The other question is uh, when it comes, I mean, especially to Android, apps can protect their windows with uh, some specific flags. So these flags don't apply in this specific attack. I mean, you can't actually see the window. Yeah. That's my question. That's interesting. Okay, thanks. Thank you okay. very much. A last question. No. Yes. Um, have you looked at the iPhone when the, the keyboard is hidden? But does the mouse pointer jump over where the keyboard was touched? So that when you emulate a mouse and move it, so that you can see where it was pressed? Um, I don't think those will be shown on the, the mirror device because basically Apple is, is blocking the, the output. Um, but it is an interesting question. Um, Especially when you think about, like, yeah, combining the, the whole setup of being able to watch the screen and also click on it and use it. Um, the code is there, so uh, you're welcome to extend on it. Thank you. I would say, say thank you to Steph and Thomas.